What are the key things you see in a startup or a company that make you believe in them and invest? So I, I look for um, repeat examples of excellence and overachievement. And that could come in a number of forms. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Moonshot by Tech Cabal. <laughs> So we are getting into funding, which is a critical conversation. Um, I'm here with Marlon Nichols, he is the founder and managing partner of Mac Venture Capital, which is an amazing venture capital fund based out of California. It's great to have you here. I'm going to start out and, and, really quickly. And we paid them to say all those nice things too. They did, they did. Uh, Mac Venture was the lead in Big Cabal Media's round last year. They put in $1.5 million into Big Cabal Media, so. And over the last two years, Mac Venture has actually deployed $20 million into startups across Africa, which is very, very exciting for a company, a, a venture fund that just started to deploy capital in Africa. It's a very rapid pace. They've invested in some very interesting companies, and I'm excited to have him here. Again, thank you. So, first things first, why Africa? Like, what made you start like investing in Africa? You're in California, you're in America, it's one of the most active markets in the world. What made you come here? So it was um, initially just kind of serendipitous. Um, I was living in the Bay Area at the time and got introduced to a founder that was building a company in Nairobi. And I didn't think that I would like the, the founder or the company, but ultimately I did and um, made the investment. And as a part of that, um, I had to start going to Nairobi once a year. And so each year I would go and I would meet a new person within the ecosystem, whether that be a founder or a banker or another investor, et cetera. And what happens is you start to build this network of people um, and you learn about um, more exciting opportunities. And so you just start writing more checks and you know, getting more and more involved. Yep. And then, yeah. You know, I'm amazed all the time about how much of business is just showing up and saying, is there an opportunity here? Is there an interesting thing here? Like, just went to another country or met somebody and they said, come and see what we're doing. And all of a sudden, you have, you know, an exciting new thing. I thought you were going to say it was the jollof rice that brought you to the continent, but clearly not. Um, so what's the strategy? Like, what is... How does Mac Venture think about investing in African startups? Is it any different than how you think in investing in American startups, or what's the strategy? So I mean, the, the, the end goal is always the same, right? We want to make money for our investors, right? Okay. So, so how do you do that? Um, we look for really big problems in big, like giant markets, right? All right. That are being um, tackled by very smart people that have a fit with the market, the company, and the challenge. Gotcha. Big problem, big market, the right founders, the right company, and they can find a solution to that big company so that you can make money for your investors. Exactly. Big part, so that we can make money for your investors. Exactly. Um, is there anything that you found unique about navigating Africa? Yeah, so some of the things, specifically in Nigeria, because Kenya and Nigeria are very different, right? Yep. Um, what, I, what I really enjoy about Nigeria is the, and the energy. And energy. The, yeah, the I can do it mentality, right? Um, it's you guys. Come on, guys. <laughs> 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 but also the, the very young, um, the you know, rapidly growing um, population, the whole mobile first, the stickiness of the, of the consumer, like all of these things, you know, make for a, a very good funding and like technology growth um, opportunity. Fantastic. What opportunities excite you the most in Africa? Like what, what, you know, what, what spaces are really interesting? There's a lot of FinTech action, but you guys have also invested in sort of property tech. Or in, so, so what's exciting space-wise for you? So we, we are, as a firm, we're sector industry agnostic. So we've invested in, around the world, we've invested in um, consumer internet companies, we've invested in B2B software companies, we've invested in fintechs, we've invested in deep tech, 
space technology, like all of it, right? Amazing. And, and we, we want to keep that, that um, kind of generalist flow. All so right. when, when I'm in a new market, what I try to do is understand what, what are the challenges, right? right. What, what, um, what's something that is stopping people from living their best lives, right? So take Split, for instance, um, which is the prop tech company prop tech, you mentioned, yep. right? So it's a FinTech prop tech. And, you know, I thought it was nuts um, learning that in order to get to into a, um, a rental unit, you have to come up with 12 to 24 months worth of rent up front. I'd Crazy. never never heard of this before, right? Yep. Um, but really, really big problem here in Nigeria and several other countries in Africa, right? Yep. And so there it is, big problem. Unique, big market. Big market, unique approach to it, and a very good founder. And so we made that investment. Fantastic. Shout out to Tola. I got to tell you, um, after I moved back to Nigeria, it took me three years to get my own place. <laughs> I lived with my folks, hi guys, <laughs> for three years because I had to take two years of rent to move. And so like, even though I'd been in the US and I was an adult, I moved back and I was like, hi dad, I'm gonna be in the, <laughs> in the room crazy. at the back. It's crazy. It's, it's so nice. yeah. um, I'm excited to see Splits solve that problem. It's a big problem. And I think they have an interesting approach. Um, so some of the other investments you've done, you've done Ajua, you've done Sote, you've done Steers, you've done Identity Pass. Of course, they've done Big Cabal Media. Um, what other investments are exciting? Are there interesting companies? Are there, what, 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 what's on the horizon? Yeah, in, um, in Kenya we have two digital health companies. Um, uh, one is called Antara, and they're kind of a digital first primary care service that sits on top of like an insurance platform. And they're growing rapidly, so they've, I think, there are four or five of the largest insurance um, companies in East Africa, they're now partnering with. And okay. then the other one is um, Afia Recode, and that's basically putting the power of medicine in the hands of the consumer. So on the blockchain, on your phone, you can now walk around with your medical records and do with them what you want. And so we love that one because it's not just a... Uh, Kenya or Nigeria or Africa problem. It's a global, global problem. problem. Fantastic. But I'm actually going to take a step back and give people a sense of the scale of Mac Venture Capital. You closed your second fund last year at $203 million. Um, I know there's always fundraising happening. Uh, but I want a, a sense of Talk to us about exits, you know, like what have you done that's been an exciting exit? What are the scale of the companies that you've invested in? Because I do want this audience to have a bit of a sense of like the size of your fund and the kind of companies you've exited, what's, what's been exciting within your portfolio? Yeah, so we manage um, just about half a billion um, in assets. Um, across decent side check. <laughs> <laughs> across two funds. Um, when, when we start a relationship with a new um, portfolio company, we can invest up to three million to, to begin that relationship, and we reserve about half of our um, fund to be able to continue to support them. Right? Fantastic. Um, in each fund, we'll have about 50 companies in the, um, in the portfolio, and we work really closely with them. Excellent. I, and I know this because they invested in us. He sits on our board. He came to Nigeria for our last board meeting. Um, your second, your second fund, about how much of that's invested? Or how many companies, you know? I think we're at something like 40 companies in the second fund. So it's getting towards the, the end of that life cycle. So, so there's yeah. new capital coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I can't talk about that. Yeah. yeah. About, how many, about how many companies would you invest in on an annual basis? Annually? Um, it, you know, we've had a year where, you know, back in like, what is it, 21, 22, when... It was just crazy. And the capital was just yeah. there. Well, I, I think we had like 20 companies that year, but usually we try to stay somewhere between eight and 12 um, per annum. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, I see the questions are starting to come in. If you take a look at the questions, you can also rank the ones that you think are most interesting and kind of have those. Um, I want to ask about sort of synergies across portfolio. Um, so you're investing in Africa. Are you seeing opportunities for African companies to do more in the US? Are you seeing opportunities to sort of like leverage this set of startups to kind of support those other startups or to do more things with together with one another? I think um, one, one of the key
key initiative, internal initiatives for us is figuring out how we build community amongst our portfolio companies, irrespective of where they are, right? Because, um, you know, for instance, we have a, a number of fintech companies, right? And some, yep. are, some are farther along, right? We have one that's valued at $2 billion now, right? I love it. I could see where um, an interaction between those founders and some of our younger fintech Africa-based companies could make sense, right? So okay. it's about figuring out how to make that natural connection um, and like inspire them to actually go off and do things together. That makes sense, that makes sense. Um, I wanna shift the conversation a little bit to, and actually, well, I've seen a little bit of that. I came for um, your founder day in California and um, a whole bunch of startups from Africa came um, and we had an opportunity to kind of talk to a range of portfolio companies, LPs, and just kind of share ideas, which is useful. I want to talk about technologies, specific technologies. AI is a big one, um, but before we get into AI specifically, like just across the technology stack, what's interesting to you? Like what technologies do you think are like, you're like, I want to see the startup that's doing this in AI. I want to see the startup that's doing this in AR or VR or whatever it is. What's interesting? So it, for me, it's, it's less about the technology and more yeah. about the problem that they're, they're solving, right? Okay. But to answer your question, if, if, you know, AI is obviously very interesting, right? And it's having a moment. Um, but there, there are other things like space technology. Like we have a company that's um, remapping the GPS system, right? So that it makes better sense for where we are today, gotcha. right? So you know, mapping in terms of centimeters versus miles. Oh, wow. Right? So things like that are also interesting. I got to say on the point that Marlon's just made, um, and speaking to some of the conversations we've had earlier today, there's a lot of really technical work, like deep technology work that has to be done to make the tools that we use work, to make like, you know, to make this phone work. There's like DARPA technology that makes... You know, like the fact that when you turn your screen, everything rotates. Like DARPA invested in that. There's like proper hardcore tech work that goes into it. And it's important that we're doing more and more of that on the continent. And it's not just applying the technologies that other people have built. Um, but you were talking about sort of like solving problems. So with something like AI, what kind of applications are exciting? You know, what kind of problem solving do you want to see? Man, there's a lot. Um, you know this uh, CFO office, for instance, um, or looking at, um, at Split or Shekel Mobility, which is another one of our portfolio companies that's acting as a underwriting entity um, in a marketplace between lenders and used car dealerships. Right? Yep. And so being able to um, more efficiently and effectively underwrite Right, um, you can use AI to, to help with that. A lot of the evaluation, a lot more. You can bring in a lot more real-time data, right? So as opposed to having, you know, um, 30 days worth of stale data, what is happening with that company today? today? What transactions took place today? All right. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Are there any specific cultural nuances or market nuances that are interesting about doing business in Africa? Anything that's different. <laughs> the, the rules change like every other day. Yeah, is, how so? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it, from you look at currency devaluation to like extreme shifts in cost of living and um, how our portfolio companies need to react to that in order to stay competitive with the, with the market. Just a, a lot of different, different things that could just pop up and things I'm not used to seeing. Yeah, I feel like Marlon's describing my last board meeting. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't imagine that, like, even currency devaluations, the scale of shifts in inflation have got to be quite challenging to sort of, like, understand. I want to move to audience questions, and there are quite a few of them now. So Jeffrey wants to know, how do you know a founder is a right fit to solving a particular challenge? So, I mean, it, it depends on, on that founder. So I've seen it where they've, um, you know, had a, a traumatic life experience, um, which was the case with um, John at Afia Recode. He had a, um, a personal friend um, pass away because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him at whatever hospital that, that he was visiting, 
And so from that, John came up with the idea, well, if everyone just had their medical records on their phones and could present it when you um, check ah. into a foreign hospital, then they don't have to do all the, you know. Like you don't have to start your diagnostics all over again yeah. and try to figure out everything. Losing time and then, yeah. and then you pass away, right? So something like that. Or, you know, maybe you are, you know, you, you came up in two of the three largest space technology um, companies as an engineer and you saw a problem there that you decided to um, dedicate your life to solving, right? So, so you have domain expertise and experience in a space. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, there's a guy named Olodo Developer, and he wants to know what are the key things you see in a startup or a company that make you believe in them and invest? So I, I look for um, repeat examples of excellence and overachievement. And that could come in a number of forms, right? You can go to all the, all the best schools, you can work at all the, the top companies, and just you know had a great career trajectory. You could also have started you know from a, a very underprivileged place and figured out a way to find success in your life, whatever that means, right? Gotcha. And and that's also you know an example of overachieving consistently. So I'm I'm looking for for winners. I'm looking for people that are very passionate about what they're building and I know they're not going to give up and they're going to find a way to win. Because this, like, this entrepreneurship journey is not easy. No, it's not. No, it is not. Um, this is a really pertinent question right now, actually. As a fund based in the US, and this is Wisdom James asking this, as a fund based in the US, how do you ensure you have the on-ground expertise and network required to source the best investments in Africa? So that's to source, that's his question. My question, in addition to that, is to do the diligence, to know that, you know, you've had a nice talk with Tamiwa. He seems like a nice guy. He seems like he's passionate about it. He says all the right things. But to know that, actually, I should invest in Tamiwa. So sourcing and then due diligence, et cetera. Yeah, I'm just winging it, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, no, it, it's, I think it's important, you know, if you enter any new market, that you do it with people that, have experience in that market, right? So yeah. we have a, a number, we have a network of a number of, um, I would call them prolific angel investors here, right? Yep. They see all the Shout great out to the angels. <laughs> great, great network. Yeah, they, they see all the great companies. They're connected to all the founders. And so if there's someone that I want to know more about, I'm just going to ask them and they'll find out and they'll, they'll tell me. The other thing that's, that's really great is once you start investing, um, the founders that you invest in, yep. like they roll with other founders, right? Absolutely. Um, and so we get to meet a lot of our next investments through our existing founders. Yeah. And I've absolutely gotten those calls saying, you know, I'm looking at this person in this space and they say they're doing this. Is it real? You know, is, are they real? You know, like how do, how do we do things? Um, okay, so that's great. Um, I have a question from Dan Dunia, which is, what has been your biggest challenge as an investor in the Nigerian startup ecosystem? I don't know if we really had a challenge yet. Um, it's, still, it's still early days. You know, I guess the, the travel, um, because we, we are very hands-on. We take board seats. We meet with our companies once a month. I am probably now here twice a year um, so, so I'd say the, the, the travel and then understanding um, regulation and the, the shifts in regulations and how quickly they come. Um, yeah, those are probably the two things. The biggest ones. Yeah. Excellent. I have a question from Ahmad, and he wants to know what advice you'd give to aspiring investors and VCs um, when investing in African startups. Um, yeah, if anything. So, the best advice that I got from one of my mentors when I wanted to be in VC is be a VC before you actually are one. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah, so there, there are things that you can do before you ever write a check, right? Okay. So you can spend time with founders. You can right. be helpful to them. You can build a reputation as a value-added 
partner to, to founders. Gotcha. You can um, develop an expertise in a certain sector or space and become the go-to person um, for that. You can build relationships with the, um, the venture and the entrepreneurial ecosystem, right? And yeah. the, the reason why those three things are, are important is when a, when a venture firm is looking to recruit, yep. they, they either want someone um, that's going to be starting out in the company to have access to deals that we otherwise wouldn't have access to. So if you've done the work to really map out the ecosystem, know all the players, you know when a, when a new deal is about to come to market, et cetera, that makes you very valuable, right? Excellent. And, and then on the flip side, if it's a sector-specific fund, if you have become like the go-to person in that sector for knowledge, then you're also valuable. So I would do both or one of those two things before entering into the space. Fantastic. I've got another question around sort of being a VC, and it's from NE, which is how do you navigate raising money from limited partners, particularly for your first fund? <laughs> you just do it. <laughs> um, it's, you know... Um, do you have to just, like, know and roll with billionaires? Like, or do you just have to, like, you know, have a parent who's, like, friends with the head of every pension fund in America? Like, how do you raise a first fund? <laughs> you knock on a lot of doors. Um, yeah. You knock on a lot of doors. It's a volume game. Yeah, it's it just it's no different from raising money from a VC, right? Um, it just we just switch seats essentially. Um, the probably the most challenging part about it though is, as a product company, you actually have a product that you're selling. As a yep. VC, I'm the product, right? My partners are the, are the product, and so we're convincing someone that. We have something that's unique and interesting enough for you to write us a check. Yeah. And that's, that can be hard, especially for your first fund when you There's don't have record. like a portfolio of companies that you can point to to say, look at all these interesting deals that we're in, look at how they're performing, et cetera. It's literally just convincing someone that they should like you and they should trust you. Gotcha. I hope. You're some very charming and capable people out in this audience. I got two more questions I want to touch on. One is, I know you said you can invest up to $3 million in your first kind of check. Um, do you invest at pre-seed level? So we, we are, we're seed fund primarily. And um, you know, seed, pre-seed mean different things to different people. Um, for, for us, seed means that you, you've built a product. So you have a viable product and you've either recently taken it to market or you're about to take it to market. That's, gotcha. where, that's where we feel like we can add the most value on the go-to-market strategy. Now, we, every now and again, we will do a pre-seed deal where we just know the founders really well and just believe in their ability to, to build and launch. Gotcha. Yeah, Fantastic. that's rare. I, I have one more question, but I'm going to do two. I imagine this is a risky business. What percentage of companies you're investing actually end up profitable or successful, like get, you know, successful output. So, I mean, success is a vague term, right? Um, well, from your perspective, return money to your investors in a sufficient quantum to make them happy. <laughs> Jewelry is still out, all right? Um, but over the course of my career, I've had some good ones. Um, okay. Yeah, where, I mean, the, when we look at an opportunity, the, the lens always has to be, can this opportunity return the entire fund? Yeah, Right. Yeah. If and if just one of them do that, and the others, you know, give us like basketball terms, layups. Yeah. We're you know we're in the money. Fantastic. I think that's an important thing for everybody to keep. You're going to ask an investor, a VC investor, for money. They want to know that your idea is capable of returning the entire fund. They've invested in 20 companies, but you are going to do so well that they will be all right. My final question is. If there's a company out here that is solving a big problem in a big market, how do they engage with Mac Ventures during Moonshot? <laughs> the, the same way you engage with Mac Ventures when you're not in Moonshot. Um, you know, one, one of the, the problems, I think, with venture capital is it's very relationship-driven, right? Which yep. means that if you are a founder that does not have a connection to us, 
it's going to be difficult for you to get in front of us. Yep. And so we try to remove that barrier um, with our website. And so it's just macventurecapital.com and then the contact. And we have a form. If you fill out the form, we, our team will read it. We read every single um, application that comes in. And then we make a decision whether that should go to a next meeting, a next meeting, et cetera. And we've made investments that were introduced to us from that platform. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's okay. way more efficient than trying to track me down and um, give me your <laughs> contact information and all that. Because um, I got a lot of other things to do. And we have a whole team that helps us to do this more effectively and efficiently. Fantastic. Thank you so very much for joining us, Marlon. Can we give a warm round of applause for Mac, Marlon and Mac Venture Capital? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>